Welcome back everybody to another episode of To Wreck Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Halo Combat Evolved, which was just recently released on the PC as part of the Master Chief Collection, and see how it compares to the original game ported to the PC by Gearbox back in 2003. For those of you that don't already know, Halo first released for Xbox exclusively in 2001, and then released for PC two years later. And while it introduced a few new features like new multiplayer maps and weapons, it was ultimately a step back when compared to the visuals of the original Xbox game. It was then remastered 10 years later in Halo Anniversary for the Xbox 360, and featured reworked lighting, objects, textures, and effects. In 2014, 343 released the Master Chief Collection for the Xbox One. That included the Anniversary version of Halo, along with Halo 2 Anniversary, and slightly improved versions of Halo 3 and 4. And finally, this past week, 343 has brought the original Halo back to the PC, with the PC version of the Master Chief Collection. Though, interestingly, it appears 343 decided to use the original Gearbox PC port as the basis for this re-release. And so, for this comparison, we're going to see just what they managed to improve over the infamous PC port of the original Halo, including how it differs in its classic mode settings, and how the enhanced visuals change the overall style and feel of the sci-fi classic. For this comparison, I'm using Gearbox's initial port of Halo on the PC, with the settings pushed as high as possible at a forced 1440p resolution, along with a tweak to the field of view to extend it to 90 degrees. And we'll be comparing it to the Master Chief Collection version, that will also be running at 1440p with a 90 degree field of view, and the settings set to the highest available option, Enhanced. Alright, to kick this comparison off, let's begin by looking at some character models, starting with Master Chief himself. Now, when playing the collection in the classic visual mode, it appears that Master Chief looks virtually identical between both versions. The texture, polygon count, animations, shaders, everything is the same as the original PC release. But when the visuals are flipped to Anniversary's enhanced mode, we can easily see some pretty drastic changes, especially to his armor design and his initial reveal sequence. The animation work in the scene feels completely off with Chief first looking down at the camera and then standing bow-legged as he emerges from his cryo sleep. In the original version, Chief is angled more and looks down towards the crewmen, giving a much more heroic first impression. It's a subtle difference, but one that certainly changes the tone of the sequence. What's even more strange are the changes made to his helmet. The rest of his suit looks about the same, with some obvious increases to poly count and texture resolution, but his helmet now appears more rounded, with the visor piece taking up more space and being flush with the bottom part of the helmet. It's a strange artistic choice, and I'm not entirely sure if it's consistent with other titles in the series. Though, if someone knows of a lore-related reason why it looks the way it does, feel free to comment below. Another interesting takeaway here is that the moment the player is given control, the anniversary version no longer allows players to look down and see Chief's armor from a first-person perspective. The cryopod just looks empty, as if you're a disembodied head. Then there's the deck crewman that helps to diagnose Chief's suit. When set to classic visuals, the fidelity of the characters match up about the same. However, the facial models are completely different, with the original PC version having darker hair and much worse facial animations. When the anniversary visuals are enabled, the character is transformed into an entirely different design, with a white uniform, sloped shoulders, and more complex shadowing. It's certainly an improvement, and gives the character a much more unique look and personality. Though, this character, along with the much brighter surrounding area, greatly impact the feel of the scene, giving much less of the dark and serious tone that the original portrayed in what's supposed to be a desperate moment in the narrative. But one of the most disappointing changes in my opinion is the redesign to Commander Keys. While the new model certainly features much nicer textures for his uniform and far more detail overall, the facial model they settled with in Halo Anniversary just looks off. It's hard to really pin down exactly why he looks so strange, though I believe it has something to do with the proportions of his eyes relative to the scaling of the rest of his face. It looks like he's both young and old at the same time, and it's just off-putting. Cortana has also seen some pretty major changes, with her purple coloration being replaced with a mix of white and blue, and a different scan line effect, replacing the sort of Matrix-like appearance she sported before. Her eyes are no longer distinctly blue, and her hair is now much longer likely to associate her model more closely with the design of later iterations of the character. The Marines have seen some of the best changes, with designs that remain consistent with the original style, only with an extra level of detail and complexity that weren't possible before. Sergeant Johnson's facial model, for example, now sports freckles and some light stubble along his neck and jaw. 
and is now able to express more genuine emotions, especially during cutscenes. Overall, most of the character models have seen a pretty major bump to quality, though I'd argue that some changes like Chief's helmet and Captain Key's face may drift a bit too far artistically. Next, let's look at some of the weapon and vehicle models, starting with the iconic UNSC Assault Rifle. The rifle model itself really hasn't seen very many changes. The only thing that really stood out to me was that even at the same 90 degree FOV, the AR in the Master Chief Collection appears slightly further away from the player, making it slightly smaller on the screen. But details like the charging handle, magazine placement, and the top mounted ammo counter all look and function identically. And new details, like scratches along the side and a more metallic appearance, make it look and feel better than ever. The only real downside I noticed with this newer version of the weapon is that spent bullet casings no longer litter the ground underneath the player like they used to. It's a small detail, but one that was always appreciated before, and it's a very odd thing to omit. The pistol offers only a few enhancements, and looks practically identical to the original version. There are some enhanced textures and bump to the poly count, but it's otherwise exactly the same. The alien weapons, on the other hand, have seen a drastic overhaul. One of the most impressive redesigns is the plasma pistol, that now features a ton more detail along the grip and receiver, along with less exaggerated plasma effects that make it easier to aim at targets. The same is true for the plasma rifle, that has seen a great improvement to its reflective surfaces, along with a few new details all throughout. Though I do wish they had preserved the scaling of the covenant markings along the side, and I was disappointed to find that the overheating effect is not nearly as noticeable as before. And then of course, there's the Needler, that now sports much more opaque pink crystals when fully loaded. What's strange about this redesign is that when firing, the projectiles no longer glow distinctively pink. It feels completely off, almost as if it's a bug, and it really hurts the aesthetic of this classic weapon. Moving on from weapons, let's take a look at the iconic Warthog. Right away, the first thing you'll notice with the new version of this vehicle is that the poly count has been increased a great deal. The wheels, for example, are no longer simple round shapes, but now appear to have visible depth to the tread of the tire. Another important note here is that the reflective surfaces are not nearly as exaggerated in the anniversary model. The metal components and windshield still feature reflective properties, but they're much more subtle. This gives the vehicle itself a darker tone, with its olive green appearance being more prominent as initially intended. Additionally, thanks to the higher res textures, new small details are now visible along the body of the vehicle, giving it a bit more personality. Overall, the game's various weapon and vehicle models have seen some great improvements, and preserve Bungie's original artistic style much better than some of the character models do. But the biggest changes can be found when looking at the environments. Halo's environments have arguably not aged very well. They're often repetitive, lack detail, and even the most natural looking locations look incredibly simplistic by today's standards. Anniversary fixed this though, with a huge uptick to the level of detail and quality found in these locations. Levels contain exactly the same layout, so there's plenty of repetitive gameplay aspects still, but the worlds feel more alive, with dense foliage, more complex geometry, and more interesting design choices. This bridge, for example, looks like an actual bridge now, rather than just a weird metal bar connecting the two cliff sides. The gorge nearby now appears much more natural, thanks to an increase to the amount of vegetation, along with more interesting environmental geometry. And the skyboxes are much cleaner, addressing one of the many concerns fans had regarding Gearbox's original PC port. When we view some of the details up close, it's clear that 343 attempted to clean up some of the messier details, like the repetitive metal texture used before, and make them flow more consistently with the architecture in the game world. This texture, for example, is more symmetrical now, and those Covenant containers feel more consistent with the style of their armor and ships. Textures, for the most part, have been improved a great deal, and in some cases, changed entirely to give more variety to the terrain. Though the grass textures still appear muddy and flat, helped only marginally by the inclusion of new 3D rendered grass effects. Now, let's look at the lighting changes. While the effects in the latest version of the game certainly aren't that advanced, there's still a nice improvement over the original version. Areas like the beach in The Silent Cartographer look much brighter and more vibrant, and areas cast in shadow feel like they're genuinely cast in shadow, rather than just being shaded differently. The only thing that's really disappointing about the enhanced lighting effects is that they often make some scenes too bright and colorful. The starting mission on board the Pillar of Autumn has an entirely different feel now, with some areas appearing much brighter than they did in the original. This scene, where you catch a glimpse of the elites behind closing doors, originally had them standing in a pitch black hallway, with their weapons being one of the few sources of light. 
but now they can be seen awkwardly watching as the doors close, which is not quite as interesting visually. Other lighting effects like the lens flare and simulated god rays have also been removed, though environmental bloom and reflective surfaces make up for this slightly. Shadows in the original game are a combination of static textures along with a few real-time effects for things like characters and vehicle models. These effects were okay for the time, but sport a lot of edge shimmer and lack the detail of the effects used in the most recent version. Shadowing is now far more complex, with things like trees now being properly projected. Though I did find that up close there's this really bad banding issue with a lot of the textures that may be caused by these shadow effects. It appears during cutscenes and when viewing character models and objects up close, and seems to be present all throughout the game. It's not terribly noticeable, but seems to only be present when using the enhanced visual mode. And then of course, we have to talk about some of the more specific visual effects, including things like explosions, fire, and water. The fire and explosive effects look much better than they did back in 2003, with new smoke effects and more complex flame sprites. This is even more noticeable when looking at static fire effects in the environment, that now feature an increased bloom to hide their center, along with more intricate fire designs along the edges to give it a cleaner look. Water effects are even more impressive. One of the biggest issues with the original PC port of Halo was its lackluster water shaders that look significantly worse than its original Xbox counterpart. This is no longer an issue with the Master Chief Collection PC release, as the water surfaces now feature improved simulation effects that look much more modern. They still don't interact with the player or any other objects in the game world, but water plays such a minimal role in the gameplay that this is a non-issue. Other complaints from the original version include the downgraded enemy shields that appear to be more consistent with the style of the Xbox version this time, and the original PC version's annoying locked 30 FPS for character and vehicle animations that now run buttery smooth with an unlocked frame rate. Finally, let's wrap up with a sound comparison. Which version of the game do you think has the best audio design? And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, the Master Chief Collection is certainly one of the most visually impressive versions of the original game on the PC. The environments are more complex, characters are more detailed, lighting is more impressive, and the biggest problems from Gearbox's old port seem to have been addressed. However, I do feel as though some of the changes made go against Bungie's original artistic direction for the title. Things like Master Chief's helmet, the lighting on board the Pillar of Autumn, and the Needler's projectiles feel off. And even when set to the classic visuals, the game still fails to perfectly capture the magic of the 2001 Xbox title. But what do you guys think? Has the Master Chief Collection finally brought the experience faithfully to the PC, or did you expect more? Let me know in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.